Hey everyone, I have something very exciting to share. I have my hands on the new Spectacles 24. These are the AR glasses that Snap announced a couple months ago. And in this video, I am very excited to share my initial thoughts, what I like, what I dislike uh, on this developer kit. And that's a key word because this is very much a dev kit and there are some rough edges, but for what they are, I'm pretty impressed. So let me give you a quick overview of physically what these glasses are like. You can take a look at them here. They are noticeably chunky, especially when you compare them to Meta's Orion AR glasses. But the key difference here between the Orion and Snap Spectacles is that these are actually in my hands. I can use them, I can make apps for them, and the Orion uh, may not become available for developers at a large scale for maybe a couple of years, who knows. Anyhow, uh, you can see here that they're, you know, the, the frame is quite thick. Even this back battery part is, is quite thick. But, you know, when you put them on, they are, so what they look like. <laughs> you hear the startup sound and now I see uh, this menu that's floating in front of me with different lenses that I can activate and open up to interact with. Um, I am able to interact with the interface using my hands. So my hands act as different cursors. Now... The one thing to note that uh, these do not have are eye tracking. So if you're familiar with eye tracking, gaze and pinch with Vision OS, uh, that's simply not present. And that is for better and worse, actually, because one of the most annoying things about giving demos for Vision Pro is you have to go through this pretty lengthy eye calibration situation. And what's great about the spectacles is I can just put them on someone and they can start using it right away. So I really like that about them. Uh, the weight is not really that bothersome, but I will say that they start to get a little bit uncomfortable after maybe 15 minutes of use. Uh, specifically, the the kind of the back part where it goes on top of your ears, it gets a little bit tight, a little pinching, and they can definitely uh, improve on the ergonomics there. But what's really neat about these, given that they're glasses, is just the sheer portability of them. Uh, I can stick these in a bag, no problem. Not They're not quite so pocketable, um, but it is quite awesome when you you know compare that to like this big bulky headset. Now, I'll be making a lot of comparisons and references to Vision Pro just because that's the next closest thing that I own that is somewhat similar, but it's not really honestly a fair comparison. They're, they exist in different classes and categories is kind of like comparing you know what an iMac is good for versus maybe uh you know a, a MacBook Air and ultimately I do see that AR glasses and something like the Vision Pro converging to something that is quite similar perhaps in I don't know five years or whatever but uh yeah I, I'm bringing up that point in comparison but uh maybe not the most fair thing to, to to compare it to I will say that I have tried you know so from my own experience I have tried uh, the first generation HoloLens as well as the first generation Magic Leap. I'll admit I have not tried the second version of those, uh, which came out a couple of years ago. But compared to the first generation of those, these are quite similar. Maybe the the field of view is a bit larger, uh, but it is kind of awesome actually to say that essentially what once was like this bulkier headset is now a, a thinner pair of glasses. Uh, when you compare like this to like the first HoloLens, for example, which was one of the very first AR type of uh, holographic experiences. So diving more into the hardware, there's this button here um, on the top of the the edge of the frame that allows you to easily start and stop a screen recording. They only limit that to 30 seconds at a time, which is kind of frustrating. I, I don't understand why. Maybe for storage, likely. And then here on the top, there's a button for power. So they fold up like this. And when they're folded, you know, they're not that compact, but they're they're decently small. Uh, the uh, box does come with this like uh, protective uh, covering thing. So it just kind of snaps on like this and then protects that front part, which is nice. So this is like a hard plastic. And if it has that nice premium feel, with the inside being this like microfiber cloth and this latch up top, it secures to the top. And then on the front, you have two cameras, one on the right and one on the left. I think they're virtually identical. And then of course, 
the inside you have these waveguides. Now, these are AR glasses, which means that notoriously, the biggest challenge with them is field of view. So if uh, to give you like a sense of what the field of view is like, um, if you stick your arm out in front of you and you kind of go like this with your hand, and uh, the space between your fingers, I guess depending on the size of your hand, roughly for me at least, is how wide the field of view is. Now, the interesting thing about the spectacles is that the field of view is taller than it is wide. So it's kind of like this space in front of you. And it's not that noticeable when you have small uh, objects floating in your space in front of you and you get a sense of presence from that. But certainly as you move your head, you will see the edges of the frame of where the screen is being projected and it does reduce the immersion. So one of the things that's so exciting, you know, when I hear about uh, Orion with the, the wider field of view is the way in which you can get more true presence from uh, having a wider uh, screen. So that is definitely one of the biggest downsides. I will also say that uh, there, so there is hand tracking uh, that allows you to interact with the menu and all the lenses and the apps. And it works decently well, but it is a little bit jittery. And overall, uh, the tracking um, and the frame rate of the, like the holograms that are in your space is a bit jittery and sometimes low low frame rate. Like if I move my head around like this, uh, I will notice a bit of jutter. Whereas that's really not present uh, in Vision Pro or even Quest. So those are some of the downsides. You'll notice it specifically like when you hold out your hand, um, that is where the main menu appears, your, your left palm. So you look at your left palm and then there's like this floating kind of jelly-like icon and you tap that to enter and exit into apps. And when you move your hand around, it does, that, that icon, you know, s stays locked onto your palm. But you can definitely notice that the, the, it's, it's moving at a lower frame rate. And I don't quite know what the, the frame rate hertz is for that specifically, but um, seems like Vision OS has that uh, improved upon, you know, with Vision OS 2. Um, some of my favorite experiences so far um, would be, there's this one lens called uh, Imagine Together. And it's quite simple, does one thing really well. And this is what the one thing that, that one of the things that Evan Spiegel demo, demoed when he uh, showed this for the first time. Essentially, it is a way of bringing your imagination to life using your voice, and it transforms your words into 3D models that float out in front of you. So you can say, uh, imagine a hamburger, or imagine a microphone, or imagine whatever, fill in the blank. And uh, as you say that, this, this bubble of content uh, appears in front of you. And it takes maybe 10 seconds to load. You see an image at first and then the image transforms into a 3D model. And then it becomes a 3D model, whatever it is that you send. And then it within this bubble, you can pinch and hold and you can move it around and it has some physics. You can tap it and push it around. Uh, but one of the coolest things about this and one of the things that one of the aspects of the Snap OS platform that I'm most intrigued by and excited by is connected lenses. Connected lenses are a way of having a shared hallucination, a synchronized AR experience with multiple people that are wearing the glasses, and you can have multiplayer experiences and essentially be looking at the same thing uh, with someone else at the same time in the same space. Now, this is also known as like co-location or co-presence, and I believe something like this does exist on Quest. I don't think it exists as far as I'm aware on Vision OS, but... Uh, what I love about this is the way in which Snap is really leaning into the use case for these glasses as a way to bring people together uh, in person and communicate. And that, yeah, really shows like the human side of like why we need or want this type of technology in our lives, right? Not as something to distract or uh, make us dumber, but to make us happier together. At least that's the promise. <laughs> uh, now, the challenge with that naturally is these devices are developer kits it's not like any of us really know too many friends or at virtually anyone with keys <laughs> um i happen to have two because i'm developing something for it but 
Uh, so, so my point is like, it's not going to be very common that you're going to like try one of these connected lenses experiences, but at least conceptually and the direction that it's going. And perhaps once this is more widely available, then, uh, that will be a beautiful thing. And, and I'd love to see more other technology companies do something similar. Uh, some other really cool things that I like about this that are unique to this platform that are quite shocking that uh, I, I do not see yet on Apple's platform is the way in which they're able to use your phone for a couple things. One, you can use your phone as a controller and you basically go into the Spectacles app on your phone and you uh, turn it on. There's like some synchronization. So you hold your phone up uh, to the glasses. It it matches where you know your phone is to what you're looking at. And then from there... Your phone can become a controller for whatever it is that you're using, whether it's like a giant paddle, uh, so it's like paddle ball game or a golf club, and it uses the uh, you know the IMU, the the motion sensors in your phone to know where the phone is, and somehow it's able also seemingly I think to track it like in 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 in, in three off or six off rather. I don't quite know how that works, but um, it's pretty cool and it, it is a little bit jittery, just like all the other parts of the experience that I mentioned, but it works decently well. Uh, the other really cool thing is spectator mode. And what that is, it's kind of like a mirroring on Vision OS, but way better. Meaning, if I give my phone on spectator mode to a friend, they can, through the lens of my phone, see what I'm looking at if I'm wearing the specs uh, and see the content and see the real world merged at the same time. So it's basically like having an AR kit type of... Um, spectator camera into the virtual world and what i love about that is it, it just it makes the ar experience way more shareable and easily understood by people that don't have the ar glasses and this seems like a no-brainer for apple to add um hopefully in vision os 3 maybe vision os 4 i mean it's just kind of like a very obvious one i'd be surprised if they don't you know come out with soon but uh, yeah, then, you know, of course, also within the Spectacles app, you also have the ability to just do general mirroring as well as um, view uh, your captures, the, the screen recording captures from the, from, the, uh, from the specs on your phone. And that works quite seamlessly as well. Uh, some other really cool things that I cannot show you um, because it's, for whatever reason, they don't allow screen recording on this one particular application is this feature called My AI. Uh, My AI is similar to the version that is in the, spe uh, in the Snapchat app itself uh, on the phone where you can talk to you know your AI character or whatever. And you know, it's kind of like ChatGPT. It's honestly, the chat experience is like not that phenomenal. It doesn't seem nearly as capable or smart as some of the more frontier models. But regardless, the experience is interesting. Essentially, uh, you with your voice, you can talk to the AI. It displays what you're saying, and then displays the response that the AI has. Then um, there is this screen behind you or behind that interface that displays photos, 3D models, websites of whatever it is that you're talking about. And so it's kind of like this visual reference for the conversation that you're having with the AI. And I find that to be uh, a unique experience of the intersection of AI and AR. And I haven't quite seen anything like that before. So those are some of my favorite experiences on the spectacle so far that I've tried. I'll be honest, a lot of the lenses that are currently in their store are pretty simple, not that compelling, nothing really like worth talking about. Um, there was one other thing now that I think about it that was kind of neat. There's this uh, like helicopter experience where you use your phone as a controller with joysticks and buttons, and then you pilot the toy helicopter around in your room. And this one takes advantage of the room meshing, the world meshing, so it knows where to place like objects around your room. And then you go around and pick up these coins and you put them into like this bucket. That one I thought was pretty neat, especially, you know, in its way that it uses the phone as a controller i think that's a very compelling concept and yet it's like where's that on vision os man like come on apple <laughs> but um 
anyhow, I think that there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. Uh, battery life is not that great. Uh, I am told that you can use an external battery. I've yet to try that, but that uh, is very welcome. And, you know, it's very early days for this platform. Um, the, there, there's also like one, one big downside is you need to use Lens Studio to make apps for this. And developers that are used to Unity, which is great because it's multi-platform, you can publish to Android XR, you can publish to Vision OS and Quest. Now you're kind of left in this limbo space with Snap OS where it's kind of the odd man standing. So I, I really do wonder uh, what Snap's plan is for that because in order for these to take off, be successful in the market, developers need an easy way to build for these. And Snap has their version of Unity, which is Lens Studio, but it's not Unity. So that is definitely one of the biggest downsides on the dev side of things. Uh, I don't have much else to comment on Lens Studio. I don't have too much experience with that, but I know that is uh, you know, one of the complaints. Anyhow, I think that the spectacles are quite promising. They're early in development, but they are one of the first real practical AR glasses that we can develop for today. And I think that's a big deal. I'm excited to see how the spectacles develop as a platform, both within this current generation, as well as how it evolves to address some of these limitations as Snap looks to br bring this to the market in a larger way. That'll be really exciting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and follow and subscribe for more content like this. I also have a free newsletter called Magic Beans where I discuss the latest on AI, Vision OS, all things mixed reality, spatial computing. You can subscribe to that at magicbeansnewsletter.com. And it has been a wonderful time to be with you today. Hope you enjoy your Christmas break and New Year's, and I'll see you next week.